Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Danish Embassy, which is actually found within the Scandinavian embassies, uh, the Nordic embassies here in Berlin. It's a special honor that we can be here for actually at least two reasons, if not three reasons. First of all, this is the only example in the world where you have all of the Scandinavian embassies that have actually come together in one structure. Uh, so at the end of our session today, uh, the Danish Embassy has kindly agreed to give us a brief tour of the actual structure itself. Architecturally, a fascinating place. You could also say in terms of public diplomacy or cultural diplomacy, also a fascinating example, where really they had this unique situation, suddenly Berlin is the capital again, and they said, all right, let's team up, uh, and let's bring our embassies together. So I think that in and of itself is really quite fascinating. The second reason why I think it's quite interesting to be here as we talk about cultural bridges uh, in Germany and cultural bridges abroad uh, is the topic of today's lecture. Uh, I must say, when I was in Copenhagen, I guess it was about two years ago, for some meetings, uh, I was also really struck uh, where you had literally everybody on bike. Uh, you know, in Germany, people say, oh, you know, I need a car. In the United States, even more. You know, I need a car for this and that. You'd have babies or mothers with babies, uh, you had members of parliaments, everyone on the bikes. And I think that in and of itself also really helps a little bit for the soft power of Denmark. Uh, I think there, the perception abroad in the world, uh, not to mention the great contributions that it gives in terms of climate change, etc. So I think it's a fascinating topic that, that you chose today in terms of, let's say, cultural diplomacy, public diplomacy, uh, how something such as bike culture uh, can also have an effect, uh, maybe you know, an integration, integrating force within uh, Denmark and also abroad. So I'd like to first uh, welcome to the podium uh, Ms. Birgit uh, Toborg Jensen, uh, who's the cultural attache of the Embassy of Denmark in Berlin. After her presentation, we have a chance to hear from Virginia Pelham, uh, who's a master student of the Center for Cultural Diplomacy Studies. And thereafter, we have a chance to hear Marianka Aja uh, Vizentin, uh, who's one of our participants, who's here visiting from Slovenia. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to give maybe a very, very warm welcome to Ms. Birgit Tovberg Jensen, Cultural Attaché of the Embassy of Denmark. If you can please join me in giving a warm welcome to Ms. Jensen. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. okay. I can't speak that fast. <laughs> in Germany, <laughs> in, uh, in Germany uh, I actually studied in England, but in Germany, uh, uh, people love if you just speak German. <laughs> so uh, I'm not using my English that much, actually. Um, so I've chosen this uh, a bit uh, unusual subject. Um, today, I'm, I'm only going to tell you, or primarily, uh, I'm going to tell you about a Danish case, but actually, uh, we work a lot uh, together here in the Nordic embassies, um, just we are we are sort of brought together by the architecture. So we uh, so we actually do quite a lot of uh, projects together, and actually we we um, we think a lot about our uh, Nordic cultural diplomacy as well. How we are working, wh in what ways we are working. So it's a it's a thing that we are reflecting in the Danish embassy, but we are very much reflecting it together with with our Nordic colleagues as well. Um, Biking diplomacy. Um, actually, it's 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 uh, this whole biking thing is very Danish, and it's actually uh, maybe you could even have this as a motto for uh, for Danish public diplomacy that is a little bit more grounded. It's not uh, um, it's it's uh, it's an everyday thing. It's uh, it's, uh, it's it's almost a way of communicating. Maybe <laughs> it's a very it's actually signaling very much a, a Danish lifestyle as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I say I should say a couple of words about myself. Um, I am uh, locally employed, uh, so I have been here in Berlin for f almost 15 years working for the Danish Embassy. Uh, we don't actually have so many diplomats anymore. So we locally employed. We are also doing diplomacy, of course. Um, I think we do actually only have we are about 40 uh, people in the Danish Embassy. And uh, we only have diplomats as head of department uh, for the time being. So it's actually relatively few and quite a lot of uh, locally employed, um, which, is a, uh, which, is, which, is, um, which is quite good, actually. Yeah, it's, it's really uh, uh, people who know uh, where they are sitting and know where they, uh, who they are talking to, and they speak the language, uh, and so on. OK. Um, just a little bit about the story. Um, maybe some of you heard about Copenhagen bike culture, but I thought uh, a little bit you should know about what is it we are communicating. Um, uh, Copenhagen has uh, 350 kilometers of bike paths, 41 uh, green, kilometers of green bike paths. 
50% of all trips to work in university in uh, Copenhagen are on bike. It's quite a lot. I think it's uh, in Berlin might be around uh, 12 or 15%. So uh, it's, it's really, really a lot of people biking. Like uh, so, this is very much a, an everyday sight in Copenhagen. Uh, you're not sort of biking alone. You are almost always biking <laughs> in uh, in groups, more or less. Um, Eighty-six percent bikes at least once a week, uh, and they are not doing it for the climate. Actually, maybe also a little bit. But um, why they uh, why do we bike? Fifty-five percent uh, says uh, it's fast and comfortable. Um, The first biking highway, uh, which is uh, from the suburb into the center of Copenhagen, uh, was inaugurated this summer. So there was a big uh, plan of doing more of these highways to uh, to um, um, to make even more people bike, uh, also longer distance. Um, what is important is that this whole Uh, bike culture is uh, very much integrated in the visions for uh, for Copenhagen as a green city. Uh, so it is uh, what I always thought was important about this whole story that is in Denmark and in Copenhagen. It's not only um, it's not only a footnote. I usually say it's not only a footnote, sort of in the in the planning in the whole planning thing, but it's it's very much up on the agenda. Yep. Um. So why? Uh, what, what is interesting about this bike culture thing? It's um, uh, it's uh, really not just a domestic thing, uh, but I think uh, a long time the Copenhageners didn't think much about their biking culture. It was, uh, actually, it was not really seen as a culture. It was just sort of a lot of people biking. So, um, but uh, then uh, actually an American, uh, an American staying in, uh, living in Copenhagen, married to a Dane, um, started blogging. And um, I can really recommend these blogs, uh, exactly, uh, especially, I don't know if you can see it, it's rather a bit green uh, up here, uh, the CopenhagenCycleChick.com. Um, it's really very funny, and um, uh, uh, lots, lots of beautiful pictures of uh, people biking in, uh, in Copenhagen. So that's how it started. Now uh, there are a lot of sister blocks, actually, around the world. Um, With the same uh, with the same teams for a lot of cities. So it started actually a bit with a blogger, and it started also with an architect called Jan Gehl. Uh, that is one of his books, one of his most famous books up here, uh, Cities for People. Cities for People is actually you will think yes, of course, is cities of course are built for people, but uh, but are they really are they really built for people? So that's uh, the Danish architect um, is uh, promoting. And he is now uh, actually promoting here and his uh, his uh, firm, uh, Gale Architects, are actually promoting it uh, around the world. And um, they have been uh, counseling uh, in Australia, in South America, uh, cities who wants to try to create more livable cities. And in this livable cities concept, um, Uh, the bike, the biking thing also plays quite a big role. It's going to see the short um, quotation from the book uh, up there. Um, what is also important actually in, in Copenhagen and what the Berliners, for instance, are envying Copenhagen is that they have a whole department. I think even it is more than five people, um, but it's a whole department only only concentrating on biking, uh, bike planning and bike uh, infrastructure. Um, and uh, in many other cities, it's something like, I don't know, one person can use a little bit of his time on, on this uh, field. Um, but of course, you have to do something. It's really 50% uh, of the tours every day are done on bike, and you have really a lot of bikers, and uh, you have also to you, have, you just have to do uh, something for them also. Um, then we even have, uh, which is relatively new, uh, created a couple of years ago, even a biking embassy. <laughs> It's called the Biking Embassy, uh, and uh, they are sort of trying to gather the interest uh, of uh, of the NGOs in in, uh, in Denmark and politics and planners and also uh, also a business uh, interest. Of course, you when you when you work with public diplomacy, as many of you probably know, also and and, and uh, uh, which is actually clear, is um, 
you always have to translate. You have maybe you have some specific interest. You have a you have a specific government, uh, and you have a foreign ministry, and they put uh, they make a list of goals, and that's where we want to go, and this is our vision, and so and so on. Um, but the important role of embassies, and maybe even more, and uh, of locally employed, like like myself, is exactly to translate these. Um, visions sort of coming uh, from uh, coming more top down and um, so uh, you have to almost have to think of how do I translate this story to my country to the country where I am sitting uh, how do I communicate this uh, story and um, I have here a couple of um, a couple of uh, examples um, on, on up on the left you have uh, an example from uh, from Dublin. Uh, where uh, a local NGO uh, actually invited a couple of people from Copenhagen to tell about uh, to tell about the Copenhagen bike culture. Um, in the US, they did a they did a lot of press work. Uh, I'm going to show you a little uh, film uh, about an, an an event they that did in New York City. So I'm just, uh, going to show you um, right in a moment. In uh, Luxembourg, uh, they took part of a, of a bigger uh, velo fest that they do every year. Uh, so that is also a way of uh, of working into uh, already existing uh, events or structures. And uh, down here, you have um, a couple of sister blocks to the Copenhagenize.com block. Um, so we'll, uh, around the world, there is actually now a. Co uh, um, a whole uh, series of blogs, sister blogs, to this Copenhagenize.com, where, um, where the, this blogger, Michael Colvin Andersen, is uh, writing about uh, biking, uh, culture and planning. Yeah, I, I think I'll just um, try to show you this, this short film, which is very nice. It's a kind of uh, an untraditional event uh, with uh, different partners. Um, our colleagues in uh, New York City worked uh, together with our uh, tourist organization, uh, Visit Denmark, and um, uh, actually uh, gave uh, out uh, lunch boxes. Uh, lunch, the lunch box is a, is a very established thing in Denmark. In Denmark, the school kids uh, are not having; um, they are not getting warm meals in the school. So, so the lunch box is something that that uh, that the parents uh, prepare every day for the children. So, this lunch box is a very established thing, and it, that was actually what they were uh, here uh, sharing. But I have a look. Okay, um, I, I think a quite uh, a quite nice version for New York City. I, I don't know, maybe we could do for such a thing in Germany or in Berlin as well. Uh, but uh, but it, it sort of fits uh, also. Uh, it's interest. It's very very interesting with New York City because I think a couple of years ago you would never have thought of New York City as a as a a nice place to go on bike uh, anywhere um, and uh, but now they're actually really trying to uh, they're really trying to uh, to uh, to uh, to better the, um, uh, uh, the to to uh, create more bike paths and uh, do something for the bikers uh, so um, so it's happening a bit there as well yep Moses Gans House. Yeah, okay. Um, in Germany, we did uh, um, 
an exhibition primarily and combined it with a lot of uh, debates uh, all around in Germany. Uh, it started with, a, in a, with an exhibition here in connection with the EU presidency um, that, we, that Denmark had in, in, in last spring. Uh, and afterwards, we, uh, we did a traveling exhibition. Uh, for the time being, the exhibition is in, uh, in Flensburg. Um, we, um, yeah, we created uh, a, couple, um, a couple of media teams, uh, so it went, uh, so it had quite a lot of press feedback. Uh, as you have seen before, uh, this whole biking, uh, biking culture thing is also very much a blog thing, which is, was interesting for us to see uh, at the foreign ministry, uh, where we um, quite a lot of years sort of have been concentrating on our web pages and have been a bit more careful with social media. Uh, but it was interesting to see that uh, this whole bike uh, theme um, very much uh, went on the blocks. Uh, you'll find, I don't know, a lot of blogs in in, uh, in in Berlin and in Germany about biking, um, and also the traditional media said that uh, on their online articles, uh, um, when they wrote about uh, Copenhagen bike culture or something, they had uh, very fast, very many people responding, responding. So it really seems to be um, a thing that people uh, would like to respond and discuss, uh, and to sort of to use these uh, blogs. So that was an interesting experience, actually. Um, we did a, a big uh, debate evening here, uh, and we um, tried also to connect city planners from Copenhagen and Berlin. Uh, that has actually, I would like to actually to do that more in other cities, but we have to see. Uh, actually, Berlin and Copenhagen city planners now uh, have been uh, meeting several times uh, to exchange experience. Um, as I said, we do we did talks and debates in, other, in some of the other cities uh, in different locations, also with different uh, stake, stakeholders. So it wasn't uh, only the embassy sort of hosting debates. Uh, we did that here in Berlin, but in other cities, it has been um, the local uh, biking NGOs, as the ADFC, uh, for instance, or, or the university. So uh, it was um, arranged locally. Um, yeah, one of our media stunts, uh, but actually a very, uh, a very uh, I think a, a nice story as well. Uh, it's the big picture that you see. We uh, we sent our two ambassadors on a borderland borderland biking tour. As you know, uh, Germany and Denmark are uh, sharing a border, and we have minorities on both sides. Uh, so we have a lot of um, we have a lot of uh, Danish institutions and schools and so on in Germany, and on the other side of the border as well. So um, so we sent them on a biking tour as the German ambassador in Copenhagen and our. A Danish ambassador here from Berlin, uh, and they sort of did a biking tour and went around and visited uh, a lot of these uh, local institutions and uh, and schools and so on, and um, crossed this border, which says I won't go into it, but it's it has been a very um, it has been a very uh, uh, it has been a, the Danish German history has been one of a lot of wars and uh, and conflicts about this border. So it has it's not just any border that you are sort of crossing on bike. It's it's really a, a very symbolical uh, border. Yeah. So um, that was one of the nice biking things we did as well. Um, what were the results? Um, we did. Uh, among other things, uh, a cooperation with the Velo Fair in Berlin. Um, we reached actually uh, a lot of other people that we than we usually reach uh, with our work. Uh, so one can say we built up a network with city planners and biking NGOs and uh, other other people, everyone other than diplomats. Actually, <laughs> um, we got a little, lot of media coverage. Uh, sort of establishing Copenhagen, Copenhagen as a model uh, for a livable city and for this whole bike culture thing. So it's often that you hear Copenhagen mentioned sort of, right? Uh, well, it's not really the theme, but it's sort of always uh, compared. And it's always the comparison. Um, then we were very surprised uh, to be asked if we wanted to, uh, to be one of five um, uh, recipients of the um, Fahrradstadt Berlin 
price. This is the price you see up here. Uh, our ambassador um, uh, received it and um, for our uh, engagement for bike culture. So this is quite interesting that we, uh, uh, who are not really, uh, well, of course, we are acting in Berlin, but we are, uh, we are also a foreign embassy. embassy. Uh, so it was quite interesting to, uh, to receive this prize uh, among uh, local uh, bike uh, projects in, in, in Berlin. Um, then we uh, joined the Climate Week in uh, Hamburg. Uh, so this is what you can see here. We were one of the Akteure im Rahmen der vierte Hamburger Klimawoche, uh, which was also interesting to connect it a little bit uh, more uh, clearly uh, to the climate uh, to the climate debate. Here you have a little bit of media feedback. Uh, as I said before, quite a lot on blogs and online. Um, actually. Uh, site online started this summer. Not that I can say that uh, that we uh, that we <laughs> that we um, suggested this, but uh, but they started a new uh, blog uh, only on uh, biking this summer. So uh, it's actually interesting that you see um, up uh, up here. You can see that the that the biking team is placed under under cars actually open. Uh, if you look, uh, if you look uh, up there, auto <laughs> is placed under the uh, the auto team on the on the online pages, uh, but now now they uh, they have to, uh, um, a new one just on its own called Velofil, which is only focused on biking. So it's interesting that sort of the newspapers are coming and seeing that there is this interest, uh, and uh, it's it's a good team actually to uh, for their online pages. Yeah. Um, well, how did it work? Uh, I think it was a unique story with this biking culture in Copenhagen. It's uh, very much about uh, identification. It's sort of, um, I have this picture. It's, um, it's, it's, it's an everyday thing. It's something that everyone can relate to. Uh, relate to. I mean, how, how, uh, how uh, I mean, a, a windmill can be technically fascinating, but, but is it something that you can identify, uh, that you have any kind of identification with, or can you sympathize with a windmill? I mean, I don't know. It's, 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 a, very, it's a very much an identification thing, I think. Everyday life, someone everyone can relate to. Um, it was... Uh, it, it was very good timing, but that's something that is very, very hard to predict uh, sometimes, but it was very good timing. Uh, it was a team in many German cities uh, at the time. Um, I, uh, it was like a quite um, easy project to handle. Uh, it, uh, it functioned uh, sort of an, an uh, open platform that is, uh, is, as it was, and is still being used quite differently because in Leipzig they might have, uh, they might have uh, special teams that are interesting for them in this, uh, in this uh, thematic um, field. Uh, and in Flensburg uh, it might be quite different. So it was sort of used differently for local stakeholders and local uh, purposes. We had very many, very many different users. Uh, I think that's quite good that we sort of, as as an embassy, we stepped a bit back as uh, as a, um, as, a, as a stakeholder in this uh, and sort of uh, let other people take over. So like the ADFC, uh, the biking NGO, the city councils, a museum. Uh, a museum of Transport in, in München, uh, for instance, uh, local transport uh, is hosting in Flensburg, uh, a university in Leipzig. So it's, it's very many different uh, stakeholders, which is, uh, which is, I think, really uh, uh, one of the good things about, about it. So, eine Stadt fährt Rad as public diplomacy. That's why, we are, that's why we are here. That's what we are talking about. Um, as I said, it's a unique story about a democratic culture uh, everyone bikes. It's not sort of. It's not sort of a special. Uh, it's not sort of a, an upper class thing. Uh, it's, not, it's also not a not a working class thing. It's, it's something everyone does in, in Copenhagen. Um, that's uh, also a thing that uh, embassies are some uh, sometimes connected a little bit with high culture. 
classical concerts or something like that. Um, and that was that was uh, quite good about this story. It was not a not a high class uh, culture, and it was not invented top down. So it's not it was not something that our foreign minister a foreign ministry sort of said. Well, uh, this year we will focus on the <laughs> what do I know? And um, but it was coming it was coming. Uh, from somewhere else, actually, and was then sort of uh, taken up by the foreign ministry. Um, then it met specific local interest. Uh, it was sort of a flexible thing also. Uh, it created a dialogue platform where local interest and stakeholders are taking over, which means, uh, and that is quite quite a team actually in foreign ministries, in our foreign ministry, you have to lose a little bit of control. Of course, you can't you can't you can't control every uh, every uh, local debate. Or uh, I mean, you, you have to sort of step a little bit back also, and it's uh, quite good. Then uh, a core team in pop for public diplomacy, uh, reaching other stakeholders than just other diplomats. That's of course uh, one of the one of the main things. Um, yeah, and then it was a small scale project in a way. Uh, it was easy to get around, it was easy to handle, uh, even by smaller NGOs or, or a small university team. Yeah, so it created uh, a lot of amb ambassadors, actually, for our team, <laughs> which is very good. That's, a, that's, a, um, that's, that's what I think is a very old-fashioned, in a way, only to have one ambassador. You really need to have more ambassadors. But these, of course, you can't control in the way that you can control what one ambassador is, uh, is uh, telling. Yeah. So, last slide. Um, and I'm really happy to answer any kind of questions. Um, the theme for this conference is also multiculturalism, so I want to relate a little bit to this uh, as well. This is, a, this is a very, very hot domestic team in Denmark and uh, uh, quite a challenging team. Um, what you can say is that uh, Danish public diplomacy uh, has been changed a lot by the cartoon crisis. Um, we are luckily now seen as something that is uh, more than just nice to have, uh, sort of. Um, someone doing a couple of classical concerts somewhere in the world. <laughs> uh, we are really sort of respected in another way. It is there's more focus on this. Uh, we even have uh, um, funding, uh, which is cross, actually cr across the ministries, there are now funding for, uh, for, uh, for branding Denmark projects. Um, I think it, it made us think more about what we are uh, telling, and and this very much in a multicultural world, uh, because I think before the cartoon crisis, Danes were just sort of thinking, oh, we go around in the world and we are generally respected and loved, and everyone thinks we are a nice little people up there in the north, and uh, and you didn't really have to reflect much about what you were doing, and now we really have to. For domestic reason, but but for for international communication reasons as well, we really have to think about it. And sometimes we get almost too cautious. I mean, sometimes it's like in foreign ministry, oh, we, we can't say this and we can't say that. Uh, so we um, so we have gotten a lot more political correct. Um, but it's also good actually. So we we think about we think uh, more about it. Um, we try, uh, one of the things that, that, that has been happening is we try to focus on other stories, of course, of different stories, uh, to say, okay, Denmark is not only the cartoon crisis, but uh, there are a lot of other things happen, uh, happening. Um, this innovation, life and balance, green nation, that's, uh, that is uh, the foreign ministry's uh, three main uh, goals for the moment. So... Um, not that we really planned it, but uh, but this bike culture is, is sort of fitting very well into every, uh, every of these uh, um, overall visions. Um, then I think what is also what's also was good about this biking thing is that it is a focus on common interest. We we all want to have livable cities. We all uh, we all want to try to do something about the climate change. We all want uh, want growth to be connected uh, with a green discourse. So it's um, maybe you can even say 
uh, it's, we have been trying to focus on common interests instead of cultural differences. So, um, I just took one example with, uh, with, you, uh, with me here, which is actually which is not a foreign ministry thing, uh, but uh, it's actually interesting to see here, and we heard that from a journalist, that, um, that the Dutch were a little bit overruled by our bike culture thing. They said, what? That, that bike culture, that's, uh, that's, our, <laughs> that's sort of our team or so. And interestingly, they now, almost a year after uh, our first bike culture exhibition up here in January, February this year, uh, they are now doing a conference, where, we, of course, we will uh, participate, uh, but they are now doing a conference on uh, bike culture together with the Berlin Senate uh, for, uh, for city development. Um, but I think, actually, sometimes, ah, that, uh, why, do, why did we at all do it on our own? I mean, we could have done it like this, uh, which is in, in the States, uh, a Dutch and Danish uh, project. Uh, that's a good thing. So um, we should be looking uh, more for allies. Uh, that's, of course, what we do a lot in the Nordic embassies, um, actually working together where, where, where we have common teams and we do have a lot of common teams. Yeah, and um, the, other, the other, I just have to explain, uh, the last photo, uh, the Copenhagen municipality actually did uh, biking courses for, um, for immigrant women because it actually uh, showed that uh, a lot of them weren't, were not able to bike or they never, le never learned it. So, uh, but it's, it's a small piece of freedom to, uh, to have the bike. It's, uh, it doesn't cost so much as a car. Um, and um, so they started doing bike courses for immigrant women. So that was just a little, um, a little uh, reflection on the multiculturalism team in connection with my bigger teams. Questions uh, are very welcome. Um, and if not, we can also discuss after the other. I will stay with you and uh, we can, uh, we can uh, also take questions after, after the other um, lectures. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>